Hi, I'm Alex, and in this video, I'll show you how I created the first iteration of AutoPi, a modular handheld Raspberry Pi based device that I created for portable reconnaissance while also offering hardware modularity and flexibility in a small platform. While aimed at portable hacking and auditing, it can be used as a pocket computer for a variety of other tasks, including word processing and gaming. It holds a 3.5 inch touchscreen TFT, built in battery management system, and four USB receptacles. In this video, I'll detail the build process of this device and how you can make your own. All files, documentation, and other supplements in this video are linked in the description or on my website at alexlin.com slash projects slash autopy. I started by laying out a basic list of specs that I wanted to implement, and I designed a schematic diagram in the popular Easy EDA suite. I then ordered all the parts I needed, which would be a 3.5 inch touchscreen TFT, a Raspberry Pi 3B, Adafruit PowerBoost 1000C, a 2500 milliamp hour LiPo battery, some USB-A female connectors, a micro SD extender, and a few other components. To fit all the parts in the smallest form factor possible, I had to slim down a few of the components, so I started by removing the female headers on the TFT with a pair of pliers, soldering iron, and some wick. As for the Raspberry Pi, however, I had to remove all the headers and connectors on the board, which was tricky since I did not have a heat gun at the time, and ended up ruining one Raspberry Pi in the process. As for slimming down the power boost, this was trivial as just removing the JST connector with a soldering iron. The next step was to create an enclosure for the parts, so I measured the dimensions of the pair of calipers and cross-referenced them with online schematics. Using the open source FreeCAD design software, I created a two-part enclosure to house the electronics that included the main case with a variety of modular features and the cover, which would simply be screwed on the back. The case came out nicely as I'd expected with all dimensional proportionality, but I had to print it with supports. The cover, however, which my friend printed in white, I had to paint by hand and attempted to gloss, which did not turn out so well. Finally, it was time to fit all the parts in the case to make sure that everything was the way I had envisioned and to lay out the electronics in reference for assembly. While I had to sand some of the edges, all the parts fit fine, even the 3D printed threading for the mounting screw I designed. After seeing that everything fit, I started the assembly process by wiring the TFT to the Raspberry Pi which I sandwiched together. I had to rework a few of the wires which broke when I folded them, but the TFT worked just fine, so I moved on to the USB receptacles. I soldered on lead wires and fed them through the case, which I soldered on the reverse probe pads of the Raspberry Pi. This was particularly tricky because of the narrow space and fine solder work, and after soldering on two of the USB receptacles, I realized that I had placed the TFT in the case backwards, which then required me to start over, since the USBs were already placed down, and since orientation of the TFT in my case design is crucial. I flipped the TFT in the Raspberry Pi, and I soon found that I had not accommodated for the overhang of the Raspberry Pi board in my design, which blocked my ability to solder on two of the USB connectors, leaving only the other two functional. The battery management system was not a problem, and I was able to securely place and glue down the SPDT switch which I wired to the power boost and securely screwed in with two random screws. I finished the assembly process by soldering the leads of the power boost to the Raspberry Pi's probe pads and attaching a 3.7 volt LiPo battery to the power boost, which would push out 5 volts to the Raspberry Pi. To allow the Raspberry Pi's microSD slot to meet the edge of the enclosure, I used an FFC microSD extender to reroute the positioning, which also provides the ability of a push-push connector. I screwed on the back lid, and with all the electronics encased, I inserted a 3.8 to 1 4th inch thread reducer in the bottom of the case, which acts as a mount for standard tripod cameras. AuditPi is a Linux-based device with the Raspberry Pi at its core, so it can run a large variety of the supported operating systems including Raspbian, Ubuntu, Kali Linux, and other Debian flavors. Although I designed this platform as a portable Kali machine, I've only tested Raspbian due to some driver issues I was having. I am currently using the Waveshare drivers for the TFT, which you can find linked below or in the video at the top. It can run the standard software in Raspbian, including the LibreOffice suite for word processing, or other tasks, and a few games, although the frame rate is slow. Also, the touchscreen is poorly calibrated, but I will hopefully have worked out all the aforementioned issues, which I'll cover in future iterations and videos. This device took me a little over a year to make due to part scarcity and financial setbacks. As the first iteration of this project, I succeeded, but a lot more work has to go into this project before these are available for sale. I hope to turn this project into an open and DIY kit, which if available, I'll link below. To follow the progress of this project, you can check the documentation out at alexlin.com slash projects slash autopy, where I have full details and will update on new iterations. If you want to help support this page for more cool content, check out how at alexlin.com slash donate. Thank you for watching this video, and see you next time.